Hi and welcome back. In this video we're going to go ahead and learn how to create a new website inside of Dreamweaver and also how to manage existing websites inside of Dreamweaver. Now the two areas that we're going to be using a lot in this video are going to be the files panel right over here and the site menu right up here. Many of the commands that are in the site menu here are also in this menu right here. And if I click that you'll see I get new site and manage sites two things that we're going to be using quite a bit in this video. Now when you want to create a new empty website to work with inside of Dreamweaver, which we need to, we're going to go ahead and select new site. And when you do that the new site dialog box is going to appear. Now this dialog box has been uh, changed quite a bit from earlier versions of Dreamweaver. So if you're using Dreamweaver CS3 or CS4 um, this may look substantially different to you. But you need to give the, uh, uh, the site a name and you also need to choose a folder on your computer to hold your website. So I'm going to call this sample site and you can again name your website anything that you wanted. And then again I need to choose the local site folder and I'm going to do that by clicking this little yellow icon to the right of this line. And when I do that the choose root folder dialog box is going to come up and I want to go ahead and go to my desktop and I'm going to create a new empty folder to store my website in. And again you're just right now creating the structure for a site and this folder is going to hold all the pages, images, all the content that you're going to build into your site. So when you're starting with a new site normally you're going to start with this an empty folder. So again here I've just chosen my desktop and this little button here, the third one from the left, is the Create New Folder button. If I click that, you'll see I get a new blank folder on my desktop. And again, you could save this in your Documents folder or wherever you're comfortable working. And I'm just going to go ahead and name this folder Sample Site. And again, that's going to be your Local Site Root Folder. Your Local Site Root Folder. And I'm just going to go ahead and double click on that to go inside of it. You need to make sure it says select and then the name of the folder that you've created. Once you've done that you can click the select button here and then go ahead and hit save. And you now have a new site that's been created inside of Dreamweaver. Now Dreamweaver can work with multiple sites at the same time. We have this brand new website without any content in it. But if I'm in the files panel you're going to see a drop down list right here has the name of the site you're working in. But if I click that drop down arrow you can see a whole bunch of other sites that I've started working on. For example I could go ahead and select this site right here and you'll see I've got some folders and some files all sort of good stuff in there. If I want to go back to that sample site I just click that drop down arrow there again and select the folder that I want to go into. And again, if you've just started using Dreamweaver, you're not going to have any of these sites here. You should just have your sample site folder. Now, creating pages inside of a website is very simple. All you're going to do is right click on the folder that you want to contain the web page. In this case, I right clicked on our local site root folder. And when I do that, I get a couple of options here at the top. New file and new folder. We'll come back to new folder in just a second. But I'm going to select new file there. And you'll see it gives me a blank new web page called untitled.html. Now, the extension that's on the end of your um, web page can either be .html or .htm. In this case we're just working with simple HTML files for, so those are the only two options that you're going to um, be working with and they're synonymous with one another. It's just whatever you prefer. Dreamweaver defaults to HTML but there's no reason why you couldn't go into the settings and change that. Later we're going to learn that there are other types of website files that you can create in different languages. For example you could create um, a PHP file and in that case the extension would not be .html, it would be .php. So here we've got untitled.html and I'm just going to go ahead and name this index.html. 
index.html. Now, with the exception of your home page for your site, or the very first page or opening page in your site, you can name your pages whatever you want. You can use letters, you can use numbers, you can even use a few symbols, but you can generally name them anything you want. You should, however, stay away from a capital letters. You should not have a number be the first character in a file name. And the only symbols that you really should be using in your file names are dashes and underscores. But within those simple rules, you can name your files anything you want. Now, I called this index.html because that's going to be my home page. And when you go to a website, let's say www.samplesite.com, the file that it brings up is always going to be your home page. And the browser knows which file is your home page because it's going to look for index.html. Now, there are a few sites out there that will want you to name your home page something else, like welcome.html, but you're always safe with naming your home page index.html. We can create as many pages as we want in this site at this time. For example, I could go ahead and let's say I want to create three more pages in this site. I want to create an About page, a Services page, and a Contact page. All I have to do is right click on that top folder, select New File, and go ahead and give it a name. I can call it About.html, right click again in New File, Contact.html, one more time, New File, we'll call this one services.html. So now I have a website that has four pages inside of it, or a new website I should say, with four pages inside of it. Now when you no longer want to see this files panel, you can just click the word files right over here and it'll collapse. Clicking it again will open it back up for you. If you want to open up a web page that you've created in a site, you simply double click on the name. For example, I'm going to double click on index.html there and you'll see the page opens up. Now, there are three different views that you can look at a web page inside of Dreamweaver in. And they are code view, split view, and design view. Code view shows you the underlying HTML for a page. And when we get into later videos, we're going to be working a lot with code view. The opposite of code view is design view right here. And if I click on design view, I'll see the page sort of as a browser would see it. This is more like working with Microsoft Word. It's a uh, what you see is what you get mode. Now, there's a lot of things that you can do in Design View, but there are even more things that you can do in Code View. As a matter of fact, there are some things that are very difficult or impossible to do in Design View, so you'll need to learn how to use Code View eventually. And again, as we go through these exercise videos, we're going to be working in both Code and Design View, and you'll see which one you should use at any one point. You also have in the middle here a Split View. And if I click that, I see the design view to the left, and I see the code view to the right. I'm sorry, the exact opposite. I see the design view to the right and the code view to the left. And let's say I type something into um, the, uh, the design view. I can go ahead and type welcome to my website and hit enter. And when you did that, you're going to see a couple of lines of code appeared in code view. So Dreamweaver is building the HTML as you type things in over here. And I could type uh, more text right here. And again, you'll see code view updates. So again, for a lot of what we're going to be doing in the next few videos, we're going to be working in design view quite a bit. But we're also later on going to work quite a bit in code view and we're going to explain what this HTML is. There's also a series on my website called Introduction to HTML that will go into all the little details about this language. And you'll find fairly quickly that as you learn HTML, it's going to be much quicker to work in code view and you're going to find a limited use for design view. And again, there are uses for it, but the more you get to know Dreamweaver, 
the more you're going to be working inside of code view. We'll come back to design. A couple of other things I want to point your attention to. There's a live view right here, which will show you what the web page is going to look like in a web standards compliant browser. And you, if I click that, you'll see I get my website here. It doesn't look a lot different right now, but you can see a slight change there. The main difference is when you're in live view, you can't actually come in here and edit anything. It's actually showing you a preview of it. And if I click live view again, it turns it off and I can now begin to edit the page. There's also this little globe button right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to preview the page in an actual browser window. So you can see the browsers that I have installed here and you can preview your page. And later on I'm going to show you how to add browsers to this. But at a minimum you should have Firefox and Internet Explorer right here. And we're going to be using Firefox for a lot of our previews. So again, we've got code view and we've got design view. Two different ways to work inside of Dreamweaver. We have live view to sort of preview it in a browser. But then we can actually open the page up in a browser and make sure of what it looks like. So very useful commands up here at the uh, top of the window here. And again, your files panel is going to show you all the files and folders for your site. Now, I said files and folders, but so far all we've done is we've gone ahead and created four web pages, four files in this um, site. And just like you can create folders to organize documents and content on your computer, you can create folders inside of your website to organize things as well. For example, one folder that everybody's going to need to have in their website is a folder to hold images or graphics. I can create a folder simply by right clicking on that topmost folder and selecting new folder. And you'll see I get an untitled folder there and I'm just going to call this images. So now I have a folder to put all of my graphics inside of. And you can create as many folders as you want inside of um, your website. Another very common folder that we're going to work with in, in this class is going to be a JavaScript folder. So if I right click up here at the top and say new folder, I could type in JS for the name, short for JavaScript. That's a fairly frequent abbreviation of the JavaScript folder. So now I can go ahead and put whatever kinds of JavaScript files I want inside of that folder. And again, as we get later on in this series, you'll see how to add JavaScript to your site. Fairly simple to go ahead and do. So I've gone ahead and I've created four files here. And I also created two folders, one for images and one for JavaScript. If you ever want to rename something in here, the simplest way to do it is to right click on it, select edit, and go down to rename. And when I do that, you'll see the name is highlighted. Or I could do the exact same thing on the images folder, edit, rename, and it will allow me to rename that particular folder. Now, again, I have a lot of websites that I'm working with here. And you can switch back and forth between the different sites you're working in just simply by selecting the correct folder. If I select the Fullerton template folder here, you'll see I get another set of files with some folders. If I want to go back into my sample site, I click that drop down arrow there again and select sample site. Now, another thing you may need to do is after you're finished working with a website, you may want to remove it from Dreamweaver. Because really quickly, if you work on a lot of sites, this list is going to become fairly unmanageable. To remove a web folder from Dreamweaver, you simply go to the site menu and select manage sites. And this dialog box is going to come up. And again, you can see I have sample site, the site we just created, highlighted there. I could go ahead and edit the definition for the site by clicking right here. And again, this should look fairly familiar to you. Or I could remove the site from Dreamweaver altogether.
Now removing the site does not delete the folder or any of the contents from the folder. All it does is it removes it from Dreamweaver's Manage Sites list. So again, that's really important. It doesn't delete the actual folder or the contents of the folder. All this does is remove it from Dreamweaver. So if I was to click on Sample Site here and click on Remove, it's going to ask me to confirm that this is in fact what I want to do, and I'm going to say Yes and you'll now see sample sites has disappeared. And I'm just going to close that off because we don't need that anymore. And again, you have the Fullerton template here, but not my sample folder. If you want to add an existing website into Dreamweaver, either the test site that we've just been working on just now, or an older site, or an existing site that you uh, want to modify, you do that by again going to the Site menu and selecting New Site. When I do that, I give the site a name, and I'm bringing up that existing website, so don't get confused that it says New Site. We're defining a new site in Dreamweaver, but for a folder that already exists. So I'm going to name this sample site again. And then my local site folder, here's the difference. When I click this yellow folder icon here and go to my desktop, instead of clicking Create New Folder here, I'm going to go find the folder that I just created, their sample site. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. And it should say again, sample or select sample site here in the upper left hand corner. And you'll even see there are the two folders that we created inside of that. You won't actually see any of the files until just a minute from now. So as soon as it says select and the local root folder that you um, have your site in, you can go ahead and click select and then save. And now you can see sample site has been added back into my list of sites here. And whoops. And you can also see the folders and again the files that we worked with. So again, adding new sites, removing sites, or adding in new existing sites is very simple to do inside of Dreamweaver. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and talk about adding content to these different pages inside of our sample site. So I'll see you in the next video.